Father and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are our teachers sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. And all we have done, and all we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be in your world and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordaining servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
saved. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. 
Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing light shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature we do not impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of, uh, for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood him, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We stand for the Holy Gospel. be restored. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, 
Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whatever, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in my God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and all seen. And in my Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, true God, true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified as Saul's cross on the cross of Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers that are printed, or you turn in your hymnal uh, to the sacrament of the altar. You can approach three questions. What is the sacrament of the altar? It is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread and wine, instituted by Christ Himself for us Christians to eat and drink. Where is this written? Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take and eat, this is mine, which is given for you, to do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after so after the supper, and he gave thanks, and broke it, and said, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new testament in my blood. Which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. What is the benefit of this eating and drinking? These words, given and shed for you in the forgiveness of sins, show us that the sacrament of forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I would say I'm pretty sure that there are mixed feelings among you concerning capital punishment. While we all might like uh, that there would never have to be such a thing as, you know, the death penalty. Most of us probably would relent the necessity of it, that in some cases it is necessary. But even with this necessity of it, I doubt any of us wish that it would be cruel, or as our Constitution says, unusual, right? or it might even be another part of our founding documents. Some crimes, though, are so heinous that we acknowledge that the death penalty might be appropriate. But generally, even the victims or the families of those victims, they're not looking that that punishment would be torturous, but that it just be just. Now, we would think it a strange depiction indeed if, if the symbol of one's belief were uh, a man that was blindfolded and his hands tied behind his back up against a post and with a firing squad standing before him. <coughs> and only the most macabre would wear a noose around their neck as an outward expression of their faith. And I dare say none of us would think about putting an electric chair as a charm on the end of our neck <laughs> or on pins in our ears. I mention these to make clear, I would say, a kind of antiseptic way in which we sometimes view the cross. You know, it's, it's an image, but it doesn't bear for us the fullness of what that image really represents. It is an artful way in which maybe we add lures and swirls to a symbol that represents, represents not only death, but an excruciating death by an inhuman punishment. Now at a time when people were still being subjected to the horrors of the crucifixion, Paul writes, and he emphasizes its central part for those who are of the way. When nobody would think, let's say, to adorn themselves with such a symbol, it was already making its way into the art of the church and into the individual piety of the believers. It was doing so because it was and it is central to the gospel. As Jesus, or a Jesus, who just smiles all the time and gives good parables that inspire us or, or encourages us, he can be a, a good buddy, he can be a swell life coach, an encourager for all of us, but a Jesus without the cross 
That Jesus is no savior from sin. Without the cross and without the, the bloody torment of both body and soul, there is no atonement. There's no payment for the injustice that we have committed against God. But by the cross, that wicked form of uh, Roman punishment, the fullness of sin, every wicked deed in thought or in, in uh, deed, every good thing that is left undone, and the very rebellion of our own natures, there they have their answer. It is in the beholding of the cross of Christ, and even more vividly, the cross with Christ, that we are able to grapple with the enormity of our sin. And even more, that unparalleled um, enormity of God's love. Here it is possible, not because of fancy words, not because of lofty thought, but only on account of the Holy Spirit, that we can see the assurance of our sins forgiven. Because God did not withhold His Son, His only Son. We find certainty that when He speaks to us absolution, it is absolute. We might find the wisdom of our age in, in many arenas, Certainly, those in politics think they have the answers to everything. Academia probably has the answers to a lot. But I would say that it's marketing, and maybe even just the algorithms of social media that speak a greater wisdom. But they have learned the finer points of winning man's favor. As an example, what do you say to a man no matter what his age, if you want him to buy something. It probably doesn't matter at all what you say to him. As long as you present it to him with a pretty woman, scantily clad and seductive in man. Because that grabs his attention. What do you promise to a woman if you want to sell her something? Maybe fewer wrinkles, less gray hair, youthfulness, if not youth itself. Nobody would pick the absolute most offensive object as a symbol of belief and then use it as an effort to somehow gain the fall. St. Paul is saying that the gospel proclamation is not dependent upon appealing to what people think they need or what people think they want. But it is a matter of presenting that one universal need, rescue from one's own wretchedness. Of course, smooth talkers can gather a following. Good lookers attract a good portion of the population. The philosopher can dazzle with the breadth and the depth of his understanding. But salvation is not found in these but rather in the simple and in the clear speech of a God incarnate, condemned and dead upon the cross. Now you might respond to me, but there's more to it than just that. He rose from the dead. Well, to which here I would have to reply, you are correct, and I would gladly do so. He did rise from death. But that is not where your forgiveness finds its root. It is not where the atonement for your sins was achieved. Yes, it is the vindication of Jesus' own righteousness that he did everything well. And it is, too, the promise for you of a vindication that in him through faith you, too, will rise. But it is not the basis of God's reconciliation to you. Now, I can, often in my own speech, and I do, I think, lots of times, lump together the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, you know, because they do come as a package deal. 
Yet they, we cannot move quickly past the crucifixion, past the sound of the hammers, past the squirting forth of his blood, and expect the resurrection to actually mean anything for us. In reading an article on Friday, I came across a statement by one of the pastors in our synod that I think quite apropos. He writes, Therefore, let us not recoil at the sight and the sound of the crucifixion. It is the battlefield of victory. It is the throne of the king. It is the symbol of salvation. Remember, the empty cross is not the symbol of resurrection. That is the empty tomb. The crucifixion is the symbol of atonement, victory, completion, and the illuminating work of the Holy Spirit. So this is tied here then to the power of God that St. Paul speaks of in our reading, where he writes, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. While the message itself might be secret, this message being a, a hidden wisdom that is of God, it is not secret and it is not hidden. It is just that its understanding is beyond the human, beyond our reason. Grappling with it and believing it is then the gift, as we confess in the third article, of the Holy Spirit. The crucifixion was and is a very public display. The plainness of the event is clear, but its significance, that is hidden in the wisdom of God revealed to men by the power of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> For the gospel, Paul writes, is that power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. It is the full consequences of your sins that bring about real contrition. The reality of what we truly deserve that works in us true repentance. And at the same time, it reveals the totality of God's love and the completeness of God our redemption. Jesus did not feign death. No, he gave up his spirit. His heart ceased beating, his lungs stopped functioning, and he became pale and cold and steady. It is what we expect for humans, but not what we expect for God. To behold the crucifix, though, is to see God. It goes beyond, then, contrition and repentance. It plums into the very depths of the divine. It reveals more of God than we could know in any other way. It shows that despite the corrupt and the lost nature of man, that God's love is greater than all of mankind's sin. Greater than our every bit of hatred for one another and him. For it is in the crucifixion of this one man, the Son of God, that all of mankind's sin is dealt with once for all. <clears throat> the world would answer, and I think in many ways we too kind of answer, it's too remarkable. Too remarkable, really, for many to believe. Too remarkable for so many to accept. Too remarkable that it has, that it's unthinkable, it's improbable, and then, by man's reasoning, unwise to believe. But thanks be to God, by the power of His Spirit, that you have heard this foolishness, that you have understood this secret wisdom of God such that this Christ of the cross, which we preach, brings to you then tears of sorrow over your sin and tears 
of joy and the forgiveness of those sins. Now then, to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power that is even at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. You can stay seated for a moment. I made mention in an email and a couple of weeks ago that um, a member by association with the congregation, while Hel uh, Helen never joined the congregation, she remained a, a member of her congregation in Montana. Um, but, but she's been here, um, I don't know the exact amount, but about four years, and I've been visiting her monthly. And, uh, and so she has become a part of our fellowship. Um, and then I announced her death a couple of weeks ago. And there was uh, an internment, a funeral, an internment for her this past week in Montana. Um, but uh, it would be appropriate for us, proper for us, and good of us to give thanks to God for um, the faithfulness that she has shown in our midst, even though I would say most of you have never met her. And so we do a remembrance of the faithful departed at this point. So as she has clearly confessed her faith in Jesus Christ and the trust in, in the centrality of the cross and the message of the gospel, she has departed this life with a good death, as we would say as Christians, faithfully trusting in her Lord for her redemption and her ultimate um, resurrection and re reunification fully with all the saints on that last day. So we remember today Helen Marion Class. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember with thanksgiving those who loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors, especially Helen Mary. Keep us in the fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. With that, I invite you to stand as we entreat our Lord on behalf of all in Christ Jesus and for all others, according to their needs. Almighty God, you delight to, to loose the bonds of, of wickedness and undo the straps of the heavy yoke, that, that, that which, and free us from sin's bondage, and we, that we may gladly receive your blessings. Preserve us from the lie that you are a cruel oppressor and give to us thankful hearts to rejoice that you are the giver of all good gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. Merciful God, preserve your church by your life-giving word. Open the lips of pastors to declare that your just decrees and, and to store them up in the hearts of your people, that we may delight in your promises and abound in good works. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, give wisdom and courage to parents as they teach their children your ways. Make our homes havens of peace and a quarrelsome and self-seeking world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you declare that a young man may keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word. Protect children and youth against the siren calls of the devil, the world, and their own sinful nature. Grant delight in your testimonies as much as in all riches. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, according to your wisdom, you establish rulers of this age for a time. Remember Joseph, our president, Janet, our governor, 
and all those that you have placed in authority, that they may, might fulfill their duties with wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Father, cause healing to spring up speedily for the sake of your Son. Have mercy upon those who suffer afflictions of sin in both mind and in body, especially for Edward, Brian, Darlene, Eldon, and Sandra, for all others upon our prayer lists and those that we lift before you now in our hearts. Where you permit trial to remain, Preserve your people in faith until that day when your light breaks forth like that of the dawn. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. O oh God, in Christ, your righteousness goes before us and your glory is our rear guard. Answer our pleas for mercy this day in the gift of Christ's body and blood and prepare all those who commune to receive him worthily and joyfully. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Holy Spirit, that delivered from the spirit of this world, we may hold fast in faith to what you freely give us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you.
has given thanks unto the Lord our God. It is that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gather in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So this is completely abnormal. Because I did skip a couple of portions in there, um, I want to, you to recall the, the reading from the small catechism, that it is in the words of institution, the words of Jesus, that make the sacrament present. And I do not want to continue unless all of you are confident that what you are partaking of today is truly the body and blood of Jesus Christ, even though I skipped over a couple of elements in, this, in the other uh, is that okay with everything? Yes. Period. Yes. Okay. Then we continue. Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Our Lord Jesus Christ keep and preserve and use the one true faith which he has granted unto each one of you in your holy baptism.
body of Christ given our Lord Jesus Christ.